Hello and welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. We're in the book of Lamentations, the book following the book of Jeremiah, written also by Jeremiah, lamenting the fact that he preached the word for decades and no one listened, and now the nation Israel has been destroyed. And we pick it up today in Lamentations chapter 18, or I should say chapter 4, verse 18. So get your Bible, if you can, open it up to Lamentations chapter 4. The scripture verse by verse website is found at the Bibleversebyverse.com. Don't forget, you can study the whole Bible with me four times through using my audio Bible messages at the Bibleversebyverse.com. So you click whatever series, whatever book of the Bible, whatever chapter and section, click and listen. It's all you need to do. Bring your Bible and a hunger for God's word to the Bibleversebyverse.com. So let's pray and get into today's study. Father, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Verse 18, Lamentations, chapter 4. They hunt our steps that we cannot go in our streets. Our end is near. Our days are fulfilled. For our end is come. Our persecutors are swifter than the eagles of the heaven. They pursue us upon the mountains. They laid wait for us in the wilderness. The breath of our nostrils, the anointed of the Lord, was taken in their pits, of whom we said under his shadow we shall live among the heathen. The anointed of the Lord refers to Israel's king. They were anointed specifically to be leaders of God's people. And the people of Judah, southern Israel, thought that their kings were special because they were anointed by God, but the kings were punished just like everyone else because of their sin. And actually, their guilt was probably worse because they were in charge. There were no special favors for the kings of Judah. They were not treated by, like kings. No special favors for them because they had rebelled just like everyone else in Judah. 21. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwellest in the land of Uz. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken and shalt make thyself naked. In other words, God promises to punish the nation Edom. They were just south of Israel. And he promised to punish them because they were cruel to Judah. While well, Judah was being conquered and completely demolished, the Edomites stood by and watched. And they applauded. And God doesn't like that. Even when somebody is deserving of punishment, don't rejoice over it. 22. The punishment of thine iniquity is accomplished. O daughter of Zion, he will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. Edom was scattered, and it indeed was punished by God. Edom ceased being a country centuries ago, scattered, punished completely, no more, just as God said it would be. Chapter 5, verse 1, Remember, O Lord, what has come upon us. Consider and behold our reproach. He asked God to behold the reproach of his people. In other words, look at us. Just look at us. And God does look at our sufferings. And he looks even when those sufferings are due to sin. And he doesn't like to see it either. His justice demands that it be there, but he doesn't enjoy looking at it. You know, sin really has marred God's existence. 
to a, to a point, it has. Because he was never in a bad mood. He was never angry. He was never sad until sin entered into his creation. And he doesn't enjoy it. He doesn't enjoy the sin, and he doesn't see, he doesn't enjoy punishing the sinner. Verse 2, our inheritance is turned to strangers, our houses to aliens. Our inheritance refers to the promised land, and it was now under the control of foreigners, meaning the non-Israelite nations. Verse 3, we are orphans and fatherless. Our mothers are as widows. We have drunken our water for money. Our wood is sold unto us. The things that God used to provide in abundance and were taken for granted are no longer there at all. He used to provide those things and he used to provide them generously to the point where they were taken for granted. Not anymore. There's nothing. God is punishing. Things have now changed. It's not the way it used to be. Five, our necks are under persecution. We labor and have no rest. We have given the hand to the Egyptians and to the Assyrians to be satisfied with bread. In other words, they're friends. Oh yeah, they're friends. Egypt and Assyria cannot help them because God is against them. There's no help coming from anyone because this is the judgment of God. And when you get in trouble with God and judgment hits, you can forget about getting help. You can forget about stopping the tide of God's judgment because it's not going to stop until and unless he says, stop. Seven, our fathers have sinned and are not. And we have borne their iniquities. Sin had spread to every generation that was alive. And each and every generation paid in their own and unique way. Verse 8, servants have ruled over us. There is none that deliver us out of their hand. We get our bread with the peril of our lives because of the sword of the wilderness. Our skin was black like an oven because of the terrible famine. In other words, their bodies were sick because they weren't eating the proper food. Infections were starting to set in. So they were running fevers. They were miserable hungry, feverish, sick. Their skin was as hot as an oven, black. Verse 11, they ravished the women in Zion and the maids in the cities of Judah. The enemies forced the women of Judah to have sex with them. This was the price that these ladies paid for their sins. And their sins also included baking bread and offerings to the queen of heaven. That so-called queen of heaven didn't do a very good job of protecting her worshipers, did she? Twelve, princes are hanged up by their hand. The faces of the elders were not honored. They took the young men to grind, and the children fell under the wood. In other words, the women were abused, and the men were made into slaves, all because they disobeyed God. And God said, if you obey me, I'll make you the head and not the tail. But if you disobey me, I'll make you the tail instead of the head. And they certainly are the tail. 14, the elders have ceased from the gate, the young men from their music. Older men used to meet at the city gate and talk because this is where the business deals were tra transacted and also political things. This is where fellowship was enjoyed and policies were discussed, but nothing like that anymore. Totally gone. 15. The joy of our heart has ceased. Our dance is turned into mourning. The crown is fallen from our head. Woe unto us that we have sinned. That pretty much sums it up. The joy of our heart is ceased. Not happy anymore. Our dance, we used to be so happy. When we serve the Lord, we live for God, we be so happy. Now that dance is no more. Instead, we mourn. Crown has fallen from our head. We used to be the top nation in the world. Not anymore. Sin has destroyed us. Woe unto us that we have sinned. Sin has completely ruined us, and sin will ruin any human being 
in any family, in any business place, in any nation. And it's never any different. Eventually, it will be ruined. My Lord in heaven, of all things, I had this last night. I don't watch much TV, and some of you may laugh, but I watched an old episode of the Flintstones, like I used to when I was a kid. I watched the Flintstones following the show. You would think that would be innocent, right? And it was. But following the show, there came directly after the, after the show, the first advertisement was an advertisement for a jewelry place. And it was so, so sweet. And it was all, the, the graphics were all about love. And then it showed two well-dressed women embracing each other and kissing. Oh, how we have fallen. My first reaction was not anger. My first reaction was fear. Fear for this country because it is flaunting this sin in the face of God. And according to Romans 1 and according to many, many other places in Scripture, you're not going to get away with it. And this country won't get away with it. We were once happy, we were once glad, we were once prosperous, we were once the greatest nation in the world, and now we will be mourning. Unless there is a great spiritual revival, which I don't see coming, because modern evangelical pastors won't call sin sin, won't tell people to repent, won't talk about hell, won't do anything negative, because they want to pad their pocketbooks, and they want to be popular, and they want to be a Christian celebrity, and the music is horrendous in many of these places because all it is is a rock show or not even necessarily a rock show, something to put on display the, the jerking musicians. God help us. It's not coming. I wouldn't bet a nickel on it. But I preach the word, teach the word, as did Jeremiah, because there will be a remnant who will respond to truth if they hear it. But, you know, the joy of our heart has ceased, he says. Our dance has turned into mourning. The crown has fallen from our head. Woe unto us that we have sinned. Every nation that turns its back on God eventually says this very same thing. And it may seem like we are getting away with it for a little while, but we won't. And the same thing will happen to us. God does not enjoy seeing his people suffer punishment for their sins. But you know what? And it does it, he doesn't enjoy it, but at the same time, it doesn't ruin his day or make him incapable of carrying on as God anymore either because he is totally satisfied in himself. He is perfectly content in himself. He's not lacking anything because he's absolutely perfect in every way. Verse 20, wherefore dost thou forget us forever and forsake us so long time? Jeremiah cannot understand why God allowed the suffering to go on. He figured they'd been punished enough. God does the figuring. And for a soul in hell who dies without Christ, it'll never be enough. It'll go on forever. Eternal torment, eternal suffering. Verse 21, Turn thou us unto thee, O Lord, and we shall be turned. Renew our days as of old. But thou hast utterly rejected us, Thou art very wroth against us. Repentance is something that God must grant to us, and he must turn us back to him. Repentance is a gift from God, and it is something that the Bible says that we are granted. However, we must receive it, and then we must act on it of our own free will, because God's not going to force it upon us. He'll grant us the grace to repent because he's not willing that any should perish but we must act on it of our own free will. If, and when we choose to repent, then God will restore us to himself and forgive us. God does not change. Instead, it is people who change, and it is people who turn their back on him. God is always ready to receive them if they truly return to him. And I'm out of time. If you would like to continue studying the Word of God with me, you can do that at thebibleversebyverse.com. And if you would like to be a part of this ministry, pray for me, pray for the Word of God. Click the Donate button at the top of the front page at thebibleversebyverse.com and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. Until next time, so long, everyone.